Hey everyone, today we are going to create a rainbow style chameleon. Um, we're going to be exploring watercolor techniques today. We're going to do wet on wet to create the chameleon. And then I'm going to show you how to do a really cool scratching technique to make the veins on a leaf. So, um, when we're finished, it will look something like this. And this is inspired by Leo Liani's A Color of His Own, which hopefully you've had a chance to read this story already. So when we are creating our chameleon, we're going to follow some drawing steps to help us get started. We want to make sure he's pretty big. We want him to fill the whole paper. It is important that you have a piece of paper that you can paint on. If you're going to use something like copy paper or notebook paper, this isn't going to work very well because that paper is not designed to get wet. Um, this paper that I'm using is a watercolor paper um, and it is really good for this because the water kind of sits more on top of the paper and doesn't just soak straight through it. So um, try to find a, a piece of paper you can paint on. And then you're also going to want your paint set, a water cup, a brush, and then to draw our chameleon we're going to use a pencil and a black crayon. So when you get started, the first thing you're going to do is you are going to draw the head shape here. So you're going to start with your pencil and you want to start over on this side of the paper and you want to make sure that it's not too tiny. So you should be able, I would say, to fit your fist in it when you're drawing it and if you can't, you probably made it too small and you'll need to erase it and make it bigger. All right, so then in the second step, I'm going to draw this little ridge on the back of his head and then to make this line big enough, what I'm going to suggest is you put your hand here and use your hand to help you. So you're actually going to make a line around the edge of your hand until you get to the other side and that'll help you to make the body big enough. Then in the third step you're going to make this little curly cue for the tail. You don't want to curve too much. Um, if you swirl it all the way in it's really hard to, to bring the tail back around. Then in the fourth step you're going to do the back of the tail. I usually like to figure out where I want it to end first. So I want it to end somewhere near the bottom of the body here. So I'm going to put a little dot here and that is my guide to help me bring the tail around. So then I'm going to start at the tip of the tail and I'm going to come around and I'm going to come down to that dot. Okay. Now to make the leg, I'm going to make two lines down and then zigzag a couple of times to make the toes. So that's the first leg. He's got four. So now I'm going to make a little space between. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Make two lines there and zigzag to make the toes. Now, when I come across here for the kind of the belly space, I want to make sure that I'm leaving space for the legs over here. So I don't want to make the belly space too long. So usually if I can fit four fingers between these two legs here, then I want to be able to do the same over here. Now I'm going to do that third leg. So I make two lines down and then zigzag for toes and then for the last leg I'm gonna make another space there a line down and a line down and then zigzag for the toes now the last part is the face he's a pretty big eye so I make a big circle for the eye and he's looking up in this if you want him to look straight ahead you can do the circle inside the eye wherever you want and then a nice smile for his mouth all right so once you have your chameleon drawn you're going to go over your pencil lines with crayon. The crayon acts as sort of like a, a wall for the water and the watercolor paint to help it keep it inside the chameleon so it doesn't drip out because crayon is made with kind of a waxy material that helps resist the water. So that's why we like to go over our lines with it so that we're creating a wall to try and keep the water inside our chameleon when we do our wet on wet painting. So take your time for this part. You don't want to make new lines here. You want to very carefully follow the lines you already have. A you want to press a little hard. You don't want to press so hard your hand hurts or your crayon snaps, but a little bit harder makes a better wall. So if your black looks a little bit lighter, more like a gray color, you might not be pressing hard enough. All right, so once that's done, you do not need to use the crayon or the pencil anymore, but you do need to do 
a little bit of prep work on your paints before we start using them. So now I'm ready to start doing the painting. I am actually gonna drip some water onto each of my paints. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze the brush and put a drip there. That's gonna help get the watercolor started. Um, as we get them started, then they make brighter colors than just trying to use them while they're dry. So you put a little drip in each one to help you. All right, so now, before I put any of the color on my paper, I am gonna get the chameleon wet. I'm basically gonna give them a bath. So in watercolor, wet on wet is a type of technique where you're putting wet paint on wet paper. And it has really cool effects because the, the paint will kind of move and travel into those wet spaces. So the very first thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna add the water without any color. Now you wanna be careful you wanna make sure the water is only inside the chameleon and it is kinda of hard to see. Um, the paper when it's wet is a little bit shiny, so um, if you have a light nearby, you can usually use that to help you. You wanna avoid the eye, so make sure you're going around his eye. And make sure you're going all the way to the edges. It's okay to go over the mouth. We're just adding water. Notice I keep reloading my brush, okay? I want it to be kinda of puddly. Not so much water that it starts dripping outside of him, but I'm, if I just try and use one, one dip of water, I'm not gonna get the paper very wet. So it should look shiny. If it doesn't look shiny, that's your clue that you need to put some more water on there. All right, so once your paper's wet, um, it does dry as you're working a little bit, so you might find yourself needing to go back and kind of add a little bit more water while you're working, and that's fine while you're adding the colors, you can always add a little bit more water, um, but the, the paper needs to be wet before you get started for the most part. All right, so I think I've got all my different spots inside the chameleon wet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna experiment with the colors. Um, you can start with any color you want, but you wanna make sure you kinda got like a little puddle there, because you're basically dropping the color on and you're gonna see it kind of bloom and spread out. So obviously you can drop really close together, and make the colors kind of make it merge and make one red space. Um, you can add little drops farther away. Um, be careful though, think about your rainbow. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Um, if I start putting all those colors together on top of each other, I'm gonna get a very brown chameleon. So um, you wanna try not to layer the colors that are opposites. Um, so if I put orange next to blue, those aren't next to each other in the rainbow. So they're probably not gonna mix and make a great color. They're gonna make more of a brown color. So try to kind of think of the rainbow rule, keeping the colors that are close to each other on the rainbow close together on here as well. So yellow is always good with orange, but blue is not good with orange. And you're dropping the color on, which means you're kind of tapping the brush. You're not really wiping the brush on the paper. And you wanna use a lot of paint for this. Now, if you notice that your paper starts drying, and the colors aren't really doing cool things anymore, then you can go back and just grab some water with your brush and add some more water in as well. Um, adding the water in also does some interesting things. Now, it will keep doing stuff as it's wet. So what you see now may not be exactly what it ends up as because it will continue to change until it's dry. So you can keep adding colors. You can use the same color more than once. I'm trying to keep them in rainbow order so that I don't get a bunch of brown colors. Um, at some points you might notice you need to get clean water, especially if you're using something like yellow because yellow can get dirty really fast. And if you notice an area where you wanna see it do more cool stuff, you can add more color and more water to it, even if you've already finished it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little blue up here in the front of his face. So you just kind of keep going and adding all those colors all the way across. Um, this is starting to dry a little bit, so I can always add a little bit more water before I add more paint as it dries. It's not super dry yet, but adding that water to begin with always helps. Um, so you can see it kind of travels. It's got some pretty cool runs and some blooms and things that are happening. And so I'm just gonna kinda keep doing this the whole chameleon. The key here is make sure you don't get the paper outside the chameleon wet because then it's not gonna stay inside the lines. The crayon will help a little bit, but if you add a lot and it starts 
leaking over or you get some wet stuff outside of the chameleon, then the crayon can only do so much. Now, once you're done with your chameleon, um, I'm gonna show you how to add some leaves as well. But you wanna make sure your whole chameleon is filled in first. All right, let me kind of come back around here. So like I said, this will keep doing cool stuff. You can see that green starting to kind of travel upwards. Um, if it can find a wet space, then it wants to go there. Watercolor paint loves to move. All right, so I pretty much have the tail left here. I'm noticing the tail's pretty dry, so I might go back and add a little water to start. And then drop some more paint in. Maybe add a little green over here, make that a little more interesting down there. And then we finish up with a little bit more yellow here towards the tip of the tail. All right, so my chameleon is now finished. Oop. Make sure you keep the paper flat. Um, if you don't keep the paper flat and you pick it up, it's all gonna drip. So it's really important it stays flat while it dries. Now, to make some of the leaves, um, I am gonna show you how to scratch the veins onto the leaf. So to do that, um, I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna make kind of a green sort of football shape here. And then I'm actually gonna use the back end of the brush I'm gonna draw a line down the middle of the leaf. As you scratch, the paint kind of sinks into that space and becomes a darker line. So you have to do it pretty quick. So you don't wanna wait because if the paint dries, it's not gonna do anything. So I would do that one leaf at a time. So line, line, fill it in, and then immediately flip the brush over, scratch that line down the middle, and then scratch a couple lines on each side to make the leaf veins. And you can add as many of those leaves as you want. You can see in my finished one here, I did them all the way around, which is very similar to the cover of the book. All right, I hope you have fun. I will see you later.